Hello, brothers and sisters, friends and family, and welcome again to another time that we can look at the, the Word and study it a little bit. We're still looking at what God says and what Jesus says about healing. So I want to welcome you again, and I want to thank you for watching. It is such a blessing to be able to come to you again and bring the Word of God to you. And before we start this, I want to take this to the Lord in prayer and ask that He be with us as we go into His Word and study it. And so let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time that we can come and look at your word and see what you say and what you've told us about healing and what you've promised us about healing and how that we can receive what your word says and we can receive that healing that you've promised us. Lord, help us to get a better understanding and to know what your will is. In your name, Father, we ask it and we command that your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, as I come to you today, I want us to look at some of the things that might stop us from receiving the healing that we need because of maybe things we're, we've done or we're not doing and what we need to do to get that healing that God has promised us in his word. So we're going to look today at a possible thing that maybe you've done or you're not doing that the word says we need to do to receive that healing that is promised to us. So today we're going to look at several scriptures one in particular that I want you to look at in the Word. The others are scriptures that we have read before, and I'm just going to go over those briefly. But I hope that you've got your Bibles again today. Always remember when you come and we watch these uh, little sermonettes that you have your Bible so that you can follow along with me because I want you to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and that you know that what I'm telling Telling you comes from the Word of God. Because if you don't know it, I could be misleading you, and I don't want to do that, and I don't want you to be misled. So please always have your Bible handy. We're going to look today at some of the things that might stop us from receiving that healing that God promises us. And I want us today to take our Bibles, and I want us to go to Exodus chapter 23, and we're going to look at verses 24 and 25. And in that scripture, it says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. As I read that, and as I searched that, I began to understand that what he was telling us in that scripture, that he don't want us serving any other God, and he don't want us to even think about that. He wants us to destroy other gods. He wants us to tear them down. He wants us to make sure that there is no other God. And as I begin to think and ponder about that, and I begin to pray about that, I begin to ask God, well, what, what do you mean by other gods? And I begin to think about that. And I thought, you know what? We have other gods that are in our life sometimes. You know, you might put, um, sometimes people put, television as a God. You know, you worship the television or you worship a car or you worship other things in your life that you might put those before God. And if you do, you need to destroy that. You need to put that away. You need to get rid of that. And sometimes even you as a Christian or as a, as a person might have other things that are God's or that you put above God himself. If something interferes with 
what God has called you to do are your worship or your serving God. If it interferes with that, then that has become an idol or it has become a God, and it is to be put away. It is to be destroyed. And that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to realize. You know, I, um, if, if I say there's a church service and, and you're supposed to be there because we're not supposed to forsake the fellowship of one another, as we see the end times coming, we're supposed to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. So we should be in church. We should be there. And if something interferes with that, now, I understand that maybe our child or our kids have something in school, that they, a school thing that they need to go to and you need to be there. Or if there's some other thing that a family member or a thing to interfere with that. But if it becomes an every Sunday thing or an every time the church doors are open, well, I've got to go do this or I've, I've got this television show that I need to see and I can't go to church because of this. Or I I'm going to go out and play with my kids or this is the only day I have off work and I'm not going to go to church because I need to be at home or I can see on television a preacher so I'm not going to go fellowship with others because I'm just going to watch TV. If this ministry was to become something that you put before going and fellowshipping with other Christians, then this could become an idol and I don't want that to be that way. So you need to put that aside and you need to pray for God to help you and go fellowship with others. So you need to pray about, God, do I have other things that are keeping me from going and doing what your word tells me to do? And if he quickens to you or he tells you that this has become an idol or a God, then you need to ask him to forgive you, and you need to put that away, and you need to come to a closer walk with him. So you might have another God that you don't even realize is there. And if you do, then you need to get it out of the way because you need to serve only one God, and that's the Almighty God. That's the God that we have, which is the one that can perform that miracle and, and do the healing. And that could be what is hindering you from receiving the healing that you need. He promises in this scripture that he will take care of your bread and your water. So he's going to make sure you're fed and the things that you need. And he will take away your sickness as long as you don't have other gods that are before him. So in this scripture, it's telling us those things. And I used some of the scripture last week or a few weeks ago that I want us to remember, and that is Matthew 6, 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. So if you, know, if you don't seek God first, if you're putting other things before God, if you're taking, let's just say you're not reading your Bible, you're not praying, you're not doing those things because you've got other things that you're doing instead of that, then that is an, a, another situation where you are not doing what God has asked us to do. He asked us to read his word. He asked us to pray. He asked us to seek him. For him. He asks us to ask him for those things. And if we're not doing that, if we're doing other things because those things seem to be more important, then, then when we ask God for healing, or we ask God to bless us financially, or we ask God to move in our lives and he doesn't do it, that, that could be the reason why he's not doing it. Well, you're not doing what I've asked you to do, he's saying. If you're not doing what I ask you to do, then how do you expect me or how do you think that I'm going to do what you need? Now, sometimes he does it anyway. Other times he doesn't because he doesn't say, 
I'm going to meet your needs if you're not doing what I want you to do or what I've asked you to do. I'm not going to meet your needs. He doesn't have to do that. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put no other God before him. Look at his word, study his word, pray because that's what he asks you to do. Forsake not the fellowship of one another as ye see the end of time coming. And we know this is the end times. We can see it all around us. The United States has fallen away from God. And because of that, we have become a nation that is, is looking at destruction and in looking at the way things are, that it is not a godly country. And we, because of that, are being destroyed in a lot of ways. And if you're not seeking God and you're not searching for him and you're not doing what you've been told to do or asked to do in his word, then you can't expect or you shouldn't expect. That's my opinion. And that's what I see in the word. You can't expect God to heal you. You can't expect God to bless you if you're not doing what he asked you to do. And if you look back in the Old Testament, when the children of of Israel weren't doing what God had asked them to do, then they didn't receive the blessings that God promised them. Now, he didn't let them do without what they needed. They walked around in the desert for 40 years. Now, he didn't he kept, took care of them. He made sure they had food. He made sure that their meat and their, those needs were met. But they never made it to the promised land. Why? Because they weren't doing what they w- were supposed to do. They weren't worshiping God. They weren't serving God the way he asked them to do. But he was making a statement there. And in that word, if you look at that, he never took total care of them. So we need to look at his word. We need to seek him. We need to seek the kingdom of God first. This could be why the healing that you need has not came and not been what has happened because you are not following what God has asked you to do in his scripture. The basic thing. Now, there could be other things God might have done, like, let's look at Jonah. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, so Jonah thought he would run from God, and he would run from what God had promised, told him to do. So what did he do? He ended up over here doing something else, and he was in a boat, and the boat was rocked, and it was tossed, and it was almost destroyed because Jonah wasn't doing what God asked him to do. When Jonah finally decided that he would do because he didn't want to be destroyed, and he didn't want to see the ship be destroyed. He was thrown overboard, and the whale took him, and he was in the belly of the whale, and then he was thrown up into the land of Nineveh, and then he did what God told him to do, and because of that, Nineveh was saved, and Jonah was blessed at that point in time. Okay? So there was, a, there was an instance where Somebody wasn't doing what God asked them to do. And if you're not doing what God asked you to do, then maybe that could be a reason why you haven't received your healing yet. So if God's called you to do something and you're running from it, or you're not doing it because you haven't, you haven't, or you don't want to do it, then that could be a hindrance that is stopping you or blocking the healing from coming into your life. So you need to pray. You need to seek. You need to ask God. You need to know that you're in God's will. And if you're not, you need to get in God's will because that could be the hindrance that's stopping you from getting what God has promised you. Sometimes healing might come because God has asked you to pray and to fast. You know, he tells us in the scripture in, um, let's see here, Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, 
that scripture tells us that, that these things only come, or this kind only goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now, at that point, he's talking about demons and spirits being um, cast out, but he, there's also other instances in the Bible where it says that we need to pray and we need to fast. And so if you've been feeling led of God that you need to spend some time in prayer and you need to fast, then you need to do what God has asked you to do. And I don't always mean, and you know, some people might argue this or might dispute this with me, but sometimes I don't think fasting means uh, always it has to be food. There might be something else that God says, I want you to take this out of your life for a while and, and spend some time with me in prayer. But fasting means giving something up. Usually it means food. But it might be that God's asked you to give something else up for a period of time. And if he's asked you to do that, then do what he's asked you to do. So prayer and fasting sometimes causes what God needs or what you need in your life to happen. If you're needing to cast out demons, it might be that you have to do prayer and fasting because that only happens through that. Okay, so um, sometimes that's what it takes. So you need to be aware of. You need to be conscious of what God's asking you to do. Listen to that still, small voice because he's not going to speak loudly. In Philippians chapter 4, or I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 4, verse 6, it tells us, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Supplication says it is to plead humbly, okay? So with prayer and supplication, pleading humbly, you know, sometimes you got to break down, you got to give it to God very humbly, asking God to meet the need or to, to answer the prayer. Um, but also with thanksgiving, you know, we are sometimes when we ask God for something, we come to him humbly. We might pray, we might plead, we might cry, we might ask God for something, but then we not too, too often we forget to thank him for what he's done or what he's going to do, you know. He always wants us to thank him. We should always remember at the end of our prayers to thank him for what he's done and what he's going to do. He can move mountains, he can part waters, and he can calm seas in, in our lives, and we sometimes forget to thank him for those things. Sometimes we forget to be thankful for the little things. You know, I thank God every day because I know that every day he has supplied my needs. I don't think I've, in years, I don't think I've ever had to beg for anything. Now, there's been times when I've done without, but I've never had to beg for my food. I've never had to um, do without what I had to have. Now, there's been times people would say, well, now you did without electricity. You did without water. You did without these things. But you know what? Even in those times, I had candles. I had a Coleman cooking stove. I, ca I packed five-gallon buckets of water from where I worked at to the house every night, and I'd always take one five-gallon hot water, and I would combine that so I could take a shower. I never did without. And, you know, those were the times that people would come over, and we had the best time socializing and gathering, and we would talk and we would reminisce, and it was the most joyful time when I looked back. But I never did without. I really didn't do without. Those were the best times. And so God met my needs. He didn't, make, he didn't let me do without. People, we, can do, we don't have to have the things that you think you have to have. You know, the God can always supply those needs. 
you don't realize that even in those times, what God can do. Maybe you have been unwilling to do something God has asked you to do. So always be aware of what God's asking you to do. And if he's asking you to do something, you just need to do it. If you don't see God working in your life, maybe he's asking you to do something and you ain't listening to what he's telling you. If you feel God's asked you to do something, it might be go down the street and help a neighbor. It might be that he's asked you to minister to somebody. It might be that he's asked you to go pray for somebody. It might be that he's asked you to go stand on a street corner and preach the gospel. But whatever he's asked you to do, if you go do it, God's going to follow through and minister to you in a way like you've never been ministered to before. And you're going to see him come through and mountains will be moved, and waters will be parted like you've never seen it before. And I know that God heals, and I know that God promises healing. And if you haven't seen healing in your life, it could be something that you haven't done. So it might be that you need to pray. It might be that you need to get into this word. If you're not spending time every day with him, if you're not seeking his will, if you're not asking him what you need to do and listening to hear what he's telling you, if you're not going and fellowshipping with the others in a church body, if you're not doing these things, then he doesn't have to. And that sounds harsh. I know it sounds kind of harsh, and I'm not trying to be harsh. But he doesn't have to. All he will do is meet the necessities of your life. He'll make sure that you don't do without bread and water and, a roof, and maybe a roof over your head and clothes on your back. He will meet those needs if you're at least trying to do something. But if you're not doing what he's asked you to do or you're not doing what the word tells you to do, then he might not ever meet the other needs that you are asking for, such as healing. He'll not bless you and, make, and help you to prosper because he doesn't have to do those things unless you're doing what he's called you and asked you to do. I know that this in some way sounds harsh and I'm not going to apologize for what I've said today because it ain't nothing but the word of God. And it's not something that I need to apologize for. If I've stepped on your feet today, if I've made you feel guilty in some way, then I, all I can tell you is you need to talk to God about it. Don't come at me. Don't be angry at me. Because I ain't done nothing but give you the word. You want healing in your life? You want to see God move in your life? Do what God's called you to do, people. Brothers and sisters, family and friends. I'm telling you today, if you want God to move in your life, do what his word tells you to do. Pray. Seek his face. Do what he's called you to do. And these things shall be added unto you if you want to see God move. Call on him and do his will. And these shall be added unto you. Not my word, but his word. I appreciate you watching me today. I thank you for your watching. I hope that some way you have been blessed. And if I've, if, I've pricked, if I've pricked your heart in some way, that you feel led to, to draw closer to God, then I am praying that God moves in your life and you do that. 
If you have a prayer request, if you have a need, if you want to let us know somehow something that you want, you can get in contact with us. All of this will come across the bottom of the screen or has come across the bottom of the screen. So please, please contact us because I will pray for you and I will do everything I can because I promise you, I love you all. I love you, and I want to see God move in your life. And I promise you he will because he promises it, not because I promise it. I'm not going to tell you it's my promise because it's not mine, it's his. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I ask that it move and that it touch lives that it meet needs, that it touch and heal people, Lord Jesus. If we're not in your will, if we're doing something that we're not supposed to do, if we have idols or gods that are before you, quicken our hearts and quicken our minds and let us know, Lord, that we can remove them and get them out of the way so that we can worship you, that you become the one and only God in our life. If we're doing things that we're not supposed to do, or if you've called us to do something and we're not doing it, Lord Jesus, quicken ourselves, quicken us, Lord Jesus, to remind us of what we're supposed to be doing and help us to have the strength and the will to go do what you've called us to do so that we can receive that healing or we can receive that blessing that you have promised us, Lord Jesus. Lord, I speak healing to those people that are watching today that are sick, I speak blessing to those people that might have a need financially or spiritually or physically in any way, shape, or form. I speak it to you, them in the name of Jesus right now. I command that the spirits that might be trying to hinder your word from being and going forth today, Lord Jesus, if there's anyone that's lost today, I speak that they might come to know you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, go before me and bless all that are watching this. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done, what you're going to do, and what you might do. In the name of Jesus, I praise you for all that is done. And I thank you that we have this opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for me. And for this ministry, I give you praise and glory for all things. Have your way, Lord Jesus, and be with us, Lord Jesus, the rest of this week. Praise you in your name. Amen and amen. I do love you, brothers and sisters, family and friends, and I thank you for what you're doing and for watching. And please come back next week and see us again. Thank you. Thank you.